They say it's safer to get someone on the International Space Station than to evacuate someone from Antarctica in the winter in case of an emergency. So if you're wondering what it's like to be an astronaut but aren't ready to leave the Earth, consider the career of an Antarctica explorer. The desert conditions around the South Pole are much like those on Mars. The lowest temperature ever recorded here was almost minus 129 degrees Fahrenheit. You can find more meteorites here than anywhere else on Earth. Plus, there isn't any sunlight here for six months every year, just like in space all the time. So, NASA scientists use this land to test their space robots, to design the best astronaut meal plans, and to know what it would feel like to fly to another planet in complete isolation. The first people came here to stay on purpose for the whole winter in 1899. All 10 of them lived in a small cabin made of pine wood that was only about the size of two bedrooms. The windows were boarded up and the roof was covered in seal skins. Heavy coal held it down to stop the wind from blowing it away. Even though it was tough, all the men survived except for one. More than a hundred years later, the little hut is still standing and is the oldest building in Antarctica. Today, Antarctica has over 40 research stations that are open all year and about 60 more that are used only during the warmer months. In the summer, up to 5,000 people live here doing their research. The places where they stay are much more comfortable than they used to be. No need for seal skins anymore. Belgium's futuristic Princess Elizabeth Station stays warm using sunlight and heat from people and electrical appliances. It's covered in shiny metal and built on strong rocks, with walls that are more than one and a half feet thick. These walls have nine layers of different materials like wool, paper, and wood. The temperature inside stays at a comfy 68 degrees, even when it's freezing at minus 58 outside. The eco-friendly station uses wind turbines and solar panels for power, and it makes more energy than it really needs. Brazil's Comandante Faraz station is divided into three levels, kind of like a themed hotel. The top part is 30 feet tall and has bedrooms, restaurants, and other facilities to live comfortably. The middle part, which is almost 20 feet tall, is used for science experiments and maintenance. The lowest part, about 8 feet high, is where they store things and park vehicles. It also has video conference rooms, libraries, and living rooms. The station's height can be adjusted depending on the temperature and melting ice, so it stays safe and comfy for the people living there. This design also helps to minimize the impact on all the wildlife around it. Another interesting station is Britain's Halley 6 Antarctic Research Station, which looks like a robot from Star Wars. It's made up of eight separate sections. The station sits on tall legs that allow the wind to blow the snow away. This way, it isn't stuck to the ground. The bottom is shaped like sleds, so they can move the station around when needed. This is important because it sits on a huge moving glacier, which slowly pushes it towards the sea. The station sleds let it be moved back regularly for important studies, like observing the atmosphere. This is the first research station that can be fully moved like this. Some scientists don't stay at research stations, but live in tents on the ice for days. They spend around half of the time trapped inside because the wind blows some serious amounts of snow on the tents and blocks the exit. They say it feels like exploring space. One earthly question though, is how they use the bathroom while out exploring in Antarctica and not at a research station. There aren't any real bathrooms unless you bring or make one. Some explorers use a special tent just for that or build snow walls or igloos for privacy. All waste has to go with them when they get back to the research station. You can't just leave the waste in the wild there, according to the Antarctic Treaty System that regulates all human activities. It could harm the local environment. So at the end of the season, they send it back to their home country in special containers. So nothing stays in Antarctica. Each research station gets its fresh water in different ways. In the past, people had to shovel snow and ice into big tanks and then heat it up to melt it into water. Now they mostly pump water from a lake that forms when ice melts and store it in a heated building. On average, 
one station needs about between two and a half thousand and four thousand gallons of water every day. To save water, people can only take three minute showers. When water is running low, they might only be allowed to shower every second or third day. Building new constructions in Antarctica isn't exactly easy because of snow that can pile up as high as a one story building. Super strong winds blowing at 85 miles per hour with even faster gusts, and temperatures dropping really low. The weather only allows transportation for about 12 weeks each summer, so some stations take years to finish. Storing everything once it arrives is tricky too, because there's not much space and the weather is extreme. Most materials stay in their shipping containers, and for things that need to stay warm, they bring special heated storage containers. So, architects have to get creative with designs and try to use less building material. India's Bharati Polar Base, for example, is made from 134 shipping containers. These containers were used to bring the materials to Antarctica, and then they became part of the building itself, covered with a special insulated shell to keep it warm. In the future, scientists might build Antarctic bases that don't need much material from outside at all. In 2009, David Garcia from a Danish company had a cool idea called the Iceberg Living Station. This would be a base with many rooms, big enough for 100 people, dug right out of the packed snow or icebergs that have broken off from the ice shelf. A group of scientists from different countries spent 26 weeks together in the Rothera Research Station. Among them were a couple of Americans, an Icelandic mechanic, a few Germans, some Scots, and a Welsh speaker. They rarely had a chance to contact their loved ones back home because it was too expensive to call on the satellite phone. With just each other for company and not many things to do for fun, they talked a lot, during work, breaks, and while playing pool. They discussed everything, mostly weather, like the wild weather and icebergs. They all used English for communication. Over time, their accents started to change. They didn't notice it at first, but they were part of an experiment where they recorded their voices regularly. They would say the same 29 basic words, like food and coffee. When the recordings were sent to a team in Germany, they found that some of the words were pronounced differently. It was clear that a new accent was starting to form. They started to pronounce the OU sounds in words such as flow and disco differently. We normally pronounce it from the back of the throat, and in their case, it shifted to the front of the mouth. Six months isn't such a long time when it comes to language changes, but such things happen when people are cut off from others. When they talk to each other a lot, they remember how the other person sounds and start copying it without even realizing it. This could help us understand why American and British English became so different. The people on the Mayflower were in similar circumstances. They were isolated when they traveled to North America. If you want to speak like an Antarctic winterer, here's some of their slang you can quickly learn. Fod plod means picking up rubbish. Fod stands for foreign object debris. If someone tells you it's a dingle day today, they mean the skies are clear blue. A smoko is a tea or coffee break. Gonk means sleep. And my absolute favorite is fox hat. It means the base cinema night. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.